Bonjour à tous. Hello, everyone. I want to begin by acknowledging that we are gathered here today on the traditional territory of the Mississaugas of the new credit First Nation, the Haudenosaunee, and the ancestral lands of the Huron-Wendat. My name is Iqwinder Gahir, and I'm the Member of Parliament for this great riding of Mississauga Malton. I'll be your host today for today's proceedings. I'm very pleased to be here with Minister El Gabra for this important announcement to provide further details on new vaccine requirements for travel in Canada. Minister. Good afternoon. Thank you very much, uh, Equinder, and congratulations on being elected as a member of parliament uh, for Mississauga Malton, you will be a terrific member of parliament who will represent your constituents proudly and vigorously. And it's great to be do my first event uh, with you as the Minister of Transport here in Mississauga. I also want to thank uh, um, Deborah and Flint and her team at the GTAA for hosting us here today. And I want to thank the media. We wanted to give you a flavor of what it felt like when you're about to travel. So it was a tease, but we're not taking you all the way there. But thank you for being here today. I also want to say that it's an honor to continue to serve in the role of Minister of Transport as we work to finish the fight against COVID-19. We want to continue to protect the health and safety of all Canadians and restart our economy and build back better for the future. For more than 18 months, the global pandemic has significantly changed our daily lives, including limiting our ability to travel for business and to visit our family and friends. And we know today that vaccination is one of the most effective ways to reduce the further spread of COVID-19. Vaccination is making it possible to keep us safe while we cautiously return to doing the things that we love. And I would like to acknowledge that most Canadians have been doing their part in helping combat, combating COVID-19 by getting vaccinated. And we are today following up on our commitment prior to the election and a commitment that we've debated vigorously throughout the election campaign. With rigorous travel requirements that include mandatory vaccine measures, we are continuing to take action to help keep Canadians safe from COVID-19. In the transportation sector, this means rules are in place requiring travelers to be vaccinated in order to board planes, trains, or vessel as of October 30th. Starting tomorrow, passengers flying on domestic, transborder, or international flights departing from Canada and passengers on Via Rail and the Rocky Mountaineer trains must be fully vaccinated in order to board. À partir de demain, les voyageurs devront être vaccinés. These requirements apply to everyone 12 years of age. Travelers will need to show proof of vaccination and airlines and railways will be responsible for confirming the vaccination status of travelers. In the aviation mode, the Canadian Air Transport Security Authority, also known as CATSA, will also support operators by confirming vaccination status. Les gens devront présenter leur preuve de vaccination avant de partir. I'd like to thank everyone who has done the right thing and gotten vaccinated. Je vous remercie ceux qui sont vaccinés. For a small number of Canadians who haven't been vaccinated yet, we are allowing for a transition period so they can get vaccinated. That's why for a short period until November 29th, travelers may show proof of a valid COVID-19 molecular test instead in order to board. Let me be very clear. If you are not fully vaccinated against COVID-19 by the end of November, you will not be allowed to board a plane or train in Canada. There will be few exceptions for emergencies and special accommodation 
for designated remote communities so residents can continue to access essential services. In addition, there will be transitional measures for unvaccinated foreign nationals who normally reside outside of Canada and who entered Canada prior to October 30th. Until February 28th, they will not they will be able to take a flight for the purpose of departing Canada if they show proof of valid COVID-19 test at the time of travel. This strict vaccination mandate is essential to safeguard employees in the transportation sector, travelers, our communities, and ourselves from the spread of COVID-19 and its variants. It's also crucial to protect against going back to the days where travel restrictions were necessary. A few weeks ago, our government announced the national COVID-19 proof of vaccination. It is an easy to use, reliable and secure way to demonstrate your COVID vaccination for domestic or international travel. If you haven't yet, honey, I encourage you to download it and use it. Utilisez cette nouvelle preuve de vaccination. Vaccination. Employers in the federally regulated air, rail, and marine sectors are also required to have mandatory vaccination policies for, in the, for their employees in place by tomorrow. I want to thank the industry for their hard work to implement these policies in their workplaces and their work to prepare to administer the requirements for passengers starting tomorrow. Un grand merci à l'industrie. Workers and organizations in this industry have been hit very hard and endured many challenges over the last 18 months, but they've stepped up and showed tremendous leadership and continue to do their part to fight this virus. These strong mandatory vaccination measures will play a key role in helping us return to the regular travel that connects families, workers, and communities. But more importantly, they will help protect the health and safety of all Canadians. By requiring travelers and employees to be vaccinated, we're helping keep everyone safe. And I know that by working all together, we will be able to beat this virus and end this pandemic. En travaillant ensemble, on va battre la COVID-19. Merci, thank you. And back to you, Equinder. Thank you, Minister, for those uh, remarks. It's an honor and a pleasure to have you in this writing. And thank you, Minister. Um, we are continuing the fight against COVID-19, um, and your remarks reinforce the government's commitment to keep our transportation sector safe for both travelers and employees. And now I'd like to invite Mrs. Deborah Flint to the podium. Ms. Flint. It's my pleasure as CEO of GTAA to be here to welcome and congratulate Minister Algabra on your reappointment and your re-election uh, Minister of Transport. It's a warm welcome. It's certainly very different than when you've been here before. You see these aircraft moving. Uh, buses and equipment and that is the sound of great commerce of jobs being recreated once again here at Toronto Pearson also a very warm welcome to you uh, MP Equinder Gahir congratulations uh, we value the relationship that we have struck with the government uh, during the course of the pandemic and we look mu very much look forward to continuing to work with you uh, on your new mandate Reflecting on the early days, Toronto Pearson Airport, uh, we recognized very quickly how important health in travel would be. And uh, protecting our passengers and our workers were our top priorities. So we're very supportive of the government and its plans to ensure that the entire ecosystem of travel is one that is safe. Like you, like health officials, we understand that vaccines are the best and the fastest way out of this pandemic. And that is why we've moved forward to implement the mandatory policy for our workforce in our entire airport environment. We know that having these measures in place will help to restore confidence in travel, protect the public health, and get all of us across this broad and important economy in the world 
back on a path to recovery. It goes without saying that a strong economy in Canada, a strong economy in the province, a strong economy here regionally relies on an important and strong Toronto Pearson. As Canadians will decide where to travel this winter and this holiday season, it's important that we work together collaboratively to make sure that that experience of travel here at Pearson and throughout the country is one that is seamless, is one that is commensurate with what Canadians expect from their travel experience here at home. There's a lot for us to do still to work on improving that process and eliminating some of the bottlenecks that come with traveling in this pandemic era still. Opportunities to leverage technology to improve that experience are here right in front of us. I certainly can't let the opportunity with the minister and the MP pass without mentioning the importance for governments to continue to support this very important industry to our Canadian economy. Uh, and of course, we know that strategic investments in our infrastructure are the way forward to having an efficient transportation system and a tri an efficient air transportation system and one that ensures that jobs are recreated and brought back here to the airport and to the, lar the second largest airport economic zone and employment zone rather in the country right here around Toronto Pearson. Our capital program today being 25% of what it was pre-pandemic is certainly a testament to how much further we have to go. We must continue to invest, start to invest once again uh, in the passenger experience and keeping Canada competitive as it once was. As you know, Minister, we are still paying rent to the government and what we are asking for are creative solutions with you to take that rent and reinvest it in our infrastructure in the aviation sector. For us alone, that would create over 10 years, $1 billion of infrastructure investment instead of or in lieu of paying rent. We know that working together can create incredible opportunities. We're on the path to building better, to restoring the economy and creating jobs once again. And we greatly appreciate the work that we've done together with the government and the path in front of us to create a better and brighter future. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Flint. And now I'm pleased to turn over the floor to Alison St. John, Press Secretary to Minister Al Gabra, who will moderate the question and answer session. Thank you. Thank you. We will now open the floor to questions. Alors nous passons maintenant à la période de questions. So we ask that you please be begin your question by identifying yourself and naming the media outlet you represent. Alors uh, nous demandons que vous commencez votre question en vous identifiant et nommant l'organisme de presse que vous représentez. And we'll proceed to our first question. Good afternoon, Mark Douglas from uh, City News 680. The uh, the one month grace period to show the negative test results. I'm just going to try to cover up the microphone here from the wind, if you don't mind. The the one month grace period, the negative test results. That's okay to travel for now, but then suddenly won't be. Why is why is that enough to get on a plane now, but then on another day it won't be enough? Uh, so the objective uh, that we've committed to Canadians is that we require vaccination for every traveler. For now, um, there are we know that Canadians who have not been vaccinated are now thinking about getting vaccinated and hopefully they will go out and get vaccinated. So they will be required to get tested prior to departure. But we so let me let me go back to the reasons why we're doing this vaccination. There are multiple reasons. One of them is ensuring that we have a safe, safe uh, workplace or travel place for travelers, for workers, for everyone. Second is to boost confidence in the industry, in, in, in travel, in aviation, because there are many people who have been thinking about traveling for business or otherwise, who've been hesitant because they're worried about whether they are on a, on a plane or a train where people sitting next to them may not be vaccinated. Third, to ensure that we don't go back to lockdowns. We don't go back to the days that Deborah was referring to where we had very few planes on the tarmac and very few travelers because of public health measures. And the way to do all of these three objectives is to get everybody vaccinated. So yes, we know that there are some people who have not been vaccinated, so we're creating an interim measure, but ultimately we want to reach a high threshold, not only of travelers, 
but in Canadian society so we can end this pandemic. Uh, just one follow-up while I'm while I'm here at the microphone. Then uh, the uh, timing of the, uh, of the of bringing in these measures is this uh, in large part, I assume, to get everybody ready and fully vaccinated well in time for uh, December holiday travels. We want to do it as quickly as possible, uh, but yes, um, um, it takes time to prepare the industry to prepare travelers. We announced this measure on August 13th. Uh, the prime minister re-announced it again. Uh, a few weeks ago and we today I'm here to again remind Canadians that as of tomorrow this policy is kicking in um, and yes uh, we know many Canadians would love to uh, we know how many Canadians love to travel during Christmas or during winter so we would love to be ready for that by then Prime Minister uh, Shauna with City News uh, just to follow up on uh, Mark Douglas's question um, th this was announced um, like you said back in August and announced again uh, everyone knew that this was coming so why bother with the grace period um, the people who are unvaccinated knew that these travel restrictions would be coming so if they haven't done it now by now why even give them more time to consider it so look this grace period includes within it a testing requirement so we're not staying where we were uh, today where we are today where there are no vaccination requirements at all and no test requirements. The, as you know, the first and second dose may require three, four months, so that's why we needed to announce it as early as possible. There are also issues of the exemptions, religious exemptions, medical health exemptions, that we wanted to give people a chance to sort out as quickly as possible, but give them a period to transition. Employers, um, um, airlines operators needed also to prepare so that's why we're we're given this grace period but it's 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 just to be uh, we know that this is the pandemic that brought uh, significant measures so we want to be as prudent as possible but we also want to be as clear as possible about the requirement hey katie damon ctv news hi minister um just some clarification what happens to foreign nationals who choose to leave Canada after the 28th of February? So let me explain first this policy. Um, over the last few months, we've had non-Canadians who came into Canada on uh, special needs. So especially, especially skilled people, temporary foreign workers, students who, are, who uh, were given an exemption um, because they were not vaccinated. Many of those are, in fact, maybe all of them want to leave at some time. So we're telling uh, and, and may, uh, have not been vaccinated. So we're saying you have till February 28th to leave. After that, the same rule will apply. So anybody who wants to leave Canada or get on a plane who, who is a foreigner who has not left by February 28th, they need to get vaccinated. Okay, and uh, my next question is, um so it's, ex it's expected that Health Canada will very shortly approve Pfizer for uh, kids 5 to 11. So does, this, uh, does the government intend to expand the vaccine requirement for travel to anyone 5 and up? I'm looking forward to uh, uh, Health Canada's decision on that process. Uh, we will, uh, based on whatever the outcome of that decision is, uh, we, will make, we will adjust our policies based again on public health advice as of now i cannot uh i don't want to preempt that we first we have to wait and see what health canada says about pfizer for uh, people who are 12 and un under hi minister camille with radio canada i was wondering if you could clarify again about the exceptions what does emergency mean in that context so uh, in consultation with indigenous communities, in consultation with provinces and territories, and in consultation with industries, we recognize there are several communities who their only way in and out for most of the year is through boarding a plane. And, and many residents of those communities um, will require to travel by plane for emergency or essential purposes. So based on, on that, we wanted to make sure that people will still have the necessary ability to get access to, to, to essential trips. So we are putting in place some 
exceptions with uh, with guardrails and with measures as well uh, to protect the health and safety of everyone. But again, those are communities that have very little, if no, access to outside to the outside world other than traveling by plane. So, so just to be sure, that we only apply to those certain communities, and there will not be any other exceptions for other Canadians in that's, country. That's correct. It is for remote communities that. Uh, um, we require that, uh, to board a plane to access essential services. So no medical or religious exemptions for other Canadians? Oh, yes. Well, that's a separate, yes. So there are exemptions for religious and medical reasons. Um, uh, and uh, I expect those exemptions to be rare, to be honest. Um, for, and those, the guidelines for those will be coming out soon. For now, unvaccinated Canadians for religious or medical reasons, need to get PCR tests, and the rules will be clarified before November 30th. Thank you, everyone, for joining us. This concludes today's event. Alors, merci tout le monde. Ceci conclut l'événement d'aujourd'hui. Thanks, everyone.